This is Pony Prepper Bill. Today is Wednesday, April 21st, 2021. The wind is kicking up bad. We just had a little storm to go through here. If you hear something making a noise, it's probably the tarp I have covering up my, uh, my wood on the deck up here. And now it's starting to rain. So this, I might have to stop this video. Now everything's getting wet. Anyway, a couple things I wanted to talk about. A lot of these prepper channels that you watch, are they really giving you the right information? Are they, do they have another agenda? First of all, a couple of years ago when I got into the, the, the prepping a little bit more than, I mean, I always prepped a little bit, but the last couple of years has gotten worse, so you got to prep more. I've been watching prepping videos and preppers and a lot of the videos and a lot of preppers that I was watching, I unsubscribed like a year ago. And now a couple of them will pop up in my news feed, like recommended, things you might want to watch. And I'm like, wow, I, I haven't watched him in a long time. I haven't watched her in a long time. And So I'll watch a couple of the videos. I'll subscribe again. I'm like, I wonder why. Maybe I got unsubscribed, because that happens a lot. And then I start listening to some of the stuff they're saying. And... You know, when you're a prepper and, you, you know, if you're buying guns, if you're buying food and you have all this stuff, you want to kind of be off grid. You kind of want to be in the background. You don't want the limelight. You don't want to be out front. But when I started watching these videos, these recent videos, oh, I'm getting wet. Cold water on my back. They contradict what they said a couple of years ago. When I watched them, they had like 30,000 subscribers maybe. 20,000, 10,000 subscribers. Now they might have 100,000 subscribers. They're contradicting what they said five years ago. As far as jobs, they were in the military when they weren't. And they said before, I was never in the military because I don't roll like that. People aren't telling me what to do. I respect it, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. But a lot of these preppers now, I understand if they have a business like if you watch a couple of people like Canadian Prepper, that's his business. He sells that stuff. And the YouTube helps him sell certain things. But when you're on YouTube, you can only say certain things. You can only comply to their guidelines and rules and regulations and all that stuff. So certain people were telling the truth, what they thought about certain things. And when I stopped watching them, now I'll watch a video or two of these people and they're completely different. They don't work anymore. They've quit their job. They're living off of YouTube. They have websites. They're selling food. They're having live streams. People donating money to them. And that's fine. You know, they're not giving any misinformation. But a lot of them, I don't think they're giving you the full information and the true facts. They squirm around the truth in certain things. Which, you know, I guess they got to make a living, but I stopped watching certain things. If you're prepping on a budget and they teach you how to, like, buy things and save money and, you know, grow your own food, canning, getting chickens. But at the same time, they're taking donations from people. People are sending them money. People are den sending them food packages and all this stuff. And if you if you got the money and you want to give money to people you don't even know on the internet I mean that that's your business a lot of people will have a patreon account you gotta pay so much a month to watch them and people are giving them money and this information should be free it's I don't ask for anything nobody's giving me money I don't have a PayPal account I'm not like oh well please you know help me out and send money I'm broke sometimes sometimes I don't have money for gas in my truck you know it's be careful who you're watching and you know if you're doing this for the, the your family if you're sending somebody you don't know I don't know how many people you watch you know but if, if you're watching like 10 different people and you're subscribing and you know he's got a live stream I'm gonna give you $20 I'm gonna give this one 20 and this guy 15 I'm gonna send him a mug I'm gonna send him a, a hat a painting or whatever that money, you could have bought 20 cases of ramen noodles 
for your family pantry. So, that's another reason I don't go to Patreon. I mean, nobody's going to, I don't have enough subscribers. Nobody's going to come and pay to watch me. But anybody, I mean, this information, it, it's like paying Channel 20 to have cable TV and paying a monthly subscription fee to Comcast or Xfinity or whatever it is, Dish Network, you're paying for these channels, 3, 6, 10, or wherever you live, Fox, NBC, you're paying money to get bullshit news. So, that being said, just be careful who you're watching, and, you know, if you want to subscribe to these people and donate money, that's, that's on you, that, that's fine. But that money could go towards your prepping supplies, you know, to help other people or something in need, not somebody that's making money on YouTube. That being said, I'm moving on. I don't, I don't, I'm not calling anybody out or anything like that. But I've stopped watching a lot of prepper videos. Another thing, how many people are actually going to survive what's coming? I've seen people that I family members, friends, neighbors, all this stuff, people are losing their jobs, they don't have money, and I saw somebody I know, oh my God, our cleaning lady isn't coming for two weeks. They have a family issue, somebody at home or something, and I don't know what we're going to do. The house is a mess, there's laundry needs to be done, the trash has to be taken out. Are you serious? your world is collapsing because you're cleaning lady you have a cleaning lady that can't come I know people that play video games and they're not worried about what's coming because you know I'm tough I play video games you know I, I carry 20 guns I have unlimited rounds of ammunition and you know I, I'm a prepper I'm take all that when shit hits the fan Carry a backpack and a shotgun. Carry two cans, 50, 50 caliber ammo cans. Two regular ammo boxes. Carry two of them full and any gun you want. Take that for five miles under woods and see how long you last. They're not going to make it. I mean, when I was a kid growing up, we were right about the Cold War and nuclear, nuclear annihilation. And they said, like, now it could never happen. It, it's, it's more of a threat now than ever. We might be going to war with Russia. And people are saying, well, it doesn't matter if it comes to nuclear war. It won't be on American soil. It, it doesn't really matter. It won't affect us. Well, everything is already affecting us. The, the shipping problems, the food, store closings. People are having problems getting stuff. If we go to war, more things could happen as far as shortages. And that could be a problem. It's already a problem. It's getting really cold out here. Uh, and my back is getting wet. Okay, somehow I got off topic. I started rambling on, going on and on. Which I do. I, I got so much to say. I should just make 20 little teeny videos. They're 5 minutes a piece or 10 minutes a piece talking about one thing. Because I go from one thing to another and I think people are just like, this guy's crazy moving on, fast forward. Um, talking about war with Russia. People said, well, this really could be World War 3. We don't know how far this could go, how bad this could really get. I would continue to keep prepping, keep keep getting supplies as long as you can. And with this new pass they're talking about with your phones, if you don't take the the needle, you might not be able to go to stores pretty soon. That's the way it is in a couple of places in New York already. So prepare for what's coming. The movie Red Dawn, when that came out, you know, I thought that was a great movie. Far fetched, it would never happen. You know, Russia coming here, and I got Russian tanks and all this stuff. They took over the police stations, and that is more of a possibility today than it was in the 80s when that came out. We already have 
Russian and Chinese people in our military and in certain places. A lot of them are already here. This George Floyd, his family has talked to the United Nations about helping the United States or getting involved in the United States for all this stuff that's going on. That could be a problem. If you, if you start seeing UN vehicles, shit has already, well, it's already stepped up. Shit's pretty much already hit the fan right now. United we stand, divided we fall. We've divided so much, I think we've already fallen. I've, I've never seen September 11th, 2001, the, the World Trade Center, the Pentagon. I have never seen in my lifetime so many people come together and forget their differences, ever, in my lifetime. Everybody, there was no racism. There was, everybody was helping each other. Everybody was, they were helping policemen, firemen. They were donating money to, to all the different causes. And it was, we were celebrating our firemen and police officers. And, and now, look where we are. This is 2021. This is, what, 20 years later? We have gotten completely flip-flopped. Now, everybody hates each other. Everybody's not standing up for everybody else. And you need to comply. If you don't like this, there's a problem with you. What happened to individuality and having your freedom of speech? If you're white and you don't like a black person, well, that's you. If you're black and you don't like a certain white person or a certain race, that's the way you're raised, or maybe you have a reason for that. You know, it doesn't mean you have to change. We are who we are. You know, is racism right? No. If racism gets in the way and there's riots and you're killing people, that's a problem. United we stand, divided we fall. And we have fallen. We have, we have divided, and we're being divided, and we're dividing even more. We're done. We're done. We have fallen so far from where we should be. And this is all a distraction. All this stuff. If the UN gets involved, we're done. If, this, if we go to World War III, this is, things are going to change like you've never seen. So, prepare for what's coming. I don't know how bad it's going to get. Maybe nothing will happen. But while we're all fighting over a certain court case. Now, I watched... I can't watch the whole thing, because I, I don't care. But, if you watch that court case, when they found him guilty, you're a white cop, you're on every channel, you're in the news, you killed a black person. You're in court, being found guilty on all charges. And he's just sitting there with his eyes wide open, like, alright, is it lunchtime yet? Is it lunchtime? I would be freaking out. I'm going to jail. I'm going to go to prison. And I'm going to get murdered. I'm a cop going to prison. It looked like he didn't care. He just looked like he was on a TV show. A reality TV show. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, we need to come together more. We need to forget all this race bullshit. I don't know anybody that's so racist as what I see on TV. I think it's all scripted. I know black people that aren't really racist against white. I know white people that aren't racist against blacks. They might not like a certain person for a certain reason, but they wouldn't like them if they were the same color as they were or whatever. It's all bullshit. And we're not looking at the bigger picture what's coming. A couple years ago, they found a container ship or something, or going through one of the canals that had a nuclear bomb on it, but it didn't have the launch codes or whatever with it. It doesn't matter who do we go to war with. We could be fighting a war way on the other side of the world, and these third world countries have these nuclear weapon capabilities. They could launch two short-range missiles on each coast, 
and EMP. Both coasts, we're done. There, there is no more gasoline. There is no more food. That, that's a pretty good possibility. I got to be careful what I say on here. I keep stopping and starting because I keep saying something that might not jive. So I'm um, stopping, starting. I'm doing a lot of editing in this. So this is Pony Prepper Bill. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think World War III is a possibility? Do you think Red Dawn on American soil is a possibility? There are Russians. There are Chinese already here. And I tried finding a video that my wife showed me last year, the year before, of some place way out, I don't know if it was Arizona or California desert. And it, it's like state land out there, but there's a gate, and they used to go out there, and they were videotaping a bunch of UN vehicles, and there was a bunch of people out there that really didn't speak English. I forget it was Chinese or whatever, but they told them they had to leave. And they said, well, this is public land, or this is... Here comes the storm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna edit this video or cut this video off here. I hope you get something out of it. I hope there's something here to salvage after I get done editing everything out of it. But people say you know Red Dawn is a great movie. It's you know 80s cheesy. It it, it could never happen. Well, let me tell you another thing. If you've looked. At all these different police stations, they're all getting ex-military vehicles. They're getting Humvees, five tons that can go underwater. Humvees that still have the armor on them. Why do all these police stations need all these Humvees? I understand certain cities. You know, if you're in Chicago or Camden, New Jersey, and maybe New York City where riots and stuff like that happen all the time, maybe they need anti-personnel carriers or armored personnel carriers not anti-personnel but you know I go down here to the shore area which is rich white neighborhoods sometimes and they got like 10 Humvees 10 five-ton trucks why do they need them in Red Dawn they took everything over all you need is a couple people established around here Russian, Chinese, whatever, and they're already in our military. They could be living here. They could even be coming over the border. You don't need any identification to come into the United States right now, right? Send Russian people in here or whoever. A couple people in these different police stations take over these little police stations. Now you got armored vehicles. So Red Dawn, to me, is a pretty good possibility. Back then, I'm like, oh my God, that could happen. And then when you get older, it's like, yeah, that would never happen. Never say never. Never say never. So, this is Pony Prepper Bill. Uh, I hope something comes out of this video. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.